The judge in Donald Trump's New York hush money trial is accusing the former president of trying to intimidate a potential juror. The jury in question was trying to explain why she had posted a video on social media showing people celebrating on the streets of New York when Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. Trump was muttering something to his lawyer, she spoke, and this judge decided that amounted to intimidation. He also decided that an individual who had posted anti-Trump content on social media was a fit and proper person to sit in the jury pool. The bias of this judge is overwhelming. Let's not forget his daughter, Lauren Merchant, has raised at least $93 million in campaign donations for Democratic clients of her consulting firm using the case in their solicitation emails. Let's bring in journalist and filmmaker Army Horowitz. Army, this is happening in your hometown. Tell me uh, the latest on this criminal case. Yeah, why did you have to add insult to injury by mentioning it's my hometown? I think that was unfair, <laughs> although true. Um, look, I, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is an example. This is exactly what, this is playing right into Trump's hand, right? He's saying that the, the that it's stacked against him. Of course it is. I mean, here he was looking at potential juror pool, right? He's in Manhattan. So already everything is stacked against him in terms of the demographics, the political demographics of, of the city. And here you have a woman, by the way, who lives in my town, the Upper West Side, which for sure means she's anti-Trump. Um, and she's dancing <laughs> and partying at an anti-Trump rally. What do you expect him to do but to mutter to himself? And just him talking to himself thinking about how crazy this is that she's in this possible jury pool, the judge says you are intimidating the witness. Look, this crystallizes the broader problem that Democrats have, right? That you use, he does something so small, and all of a sudden you make it this huge witness intimidation thing. It's the same thing when, when Biden goes, uh, here is Donald Trump. He's anti-democratic. He's going to be a, a dictator. Look, this hyperbole will fail. This dog won't hunt. The American people understand that this is craziness and therefore they're going to side with Trump. This is a crystallization underlying the broader problem that Democrats have. Well, the headlines in this country, because the bulk of our media just follows the MSNBC talking points, uh, the headlines are Trump accused of witness intimidation and Trump warned about it. Witnesses. So no one's actually <laughs> reading down to the detail to see how absurd this, this claim by the judge is. Uh, but I think in America, you're far more awake to what's happening. Now, let's talk about the, the figures coming out of the US border crisis, uh, millions coming in illegally, as we have discussed in the past through that southern border. The humanitarian parole program is also adding hundreds of thousands coming in from countries like Haiti. But that's not enough because there's also what are called the getaways. These are the record numbers who come through undetected. The estimates uh, are around 1.8 million have come through since 2021. And let's look at how they do it. As Fox News's Bill Meldoon uh, notes, they all step into the same footprints as they walk and then they use branches to clear the tracks behind them to make it harder for Border Patrol to track them. Uh, this footage is... is uh, well, it's worrying, Army. They're, they're mainly male, military age. Do we know much more about them? Yeah, look, no, we, we, that, by definition, we don't know a lot about them because they are getting in illegally. They're illegal aliens. Yeah, I use that term. More on that later. Um, and so we don't know. Yeah. But I'll tell you what we... Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this, is that uh, we are bombarded in our media with examples of criminal of criminal behavior by these illegal aliens. Uh, we've seen violence, illegal behavior, you know, and now what we're seeing, this new kind of trend we're seeing is the idea of squatting. Now, I don't know if people in Australia understand what this concept means, but in the blue states here, what, what they've done is they've legalized people essentially stealing homes. I know that sounds crazy, but essentially if you break into a home 
and you are there for more than a certain amount of days, you would now have legal rights to that home. Despite the fact you have zero connection to it and it becomes very difficult for the real owners to kick you out. So these illegal aliens have now are now gaming the system and we're now bombarded with new images of these illegals now squatting in homes and taking over homes. Look, I know Biden wants to do nothing for the border because he thinks that some kind of electoral win from him, but just from the sense of self-preservation, this thing is so out of control, you would think he'd want to do something just for his own electoral prospects. Never mind that he doesn't care that we have open borders, right? That's his realist philosophy. But just from a self-preservation concept, he would think he would do something. He's doing, he's so bad at this, Rita. He's so bad at this. This is why Trump is beating him consistently in the polls for things like this. Well, he's got other problems as well. The anti-Israel protests are intensifying around the country. You've got bridges being blocked from San Francisco to New York, Intifada being called for. There is violence. There's, there's mass disruption, anti-Semitic chants. Uh, they're even burning American flags army, something that is becoming very, well, not commonplace. It's not quite commonplace, but they're very casual about it these days. Not long ago, that would have caused widespread outrage. Uh, is this impacting Joe Biden's decision making? Is he feeling these domestic pressures and that's influencing his foreign policy? Mm, let me think about that one. Duh! Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, a massive miscalculation is part. Look, my daughter just texted me literally five minutes ago. Uh, she goes to Binghamton University, which has actually been a pretty pro-Israel school, a school that I felt comfortable sending her to because it has a large Jewish population. She just told me they just voted for BDS to be enacted at Binghamton University. It is shocking that it has reached even to that level, a very relatively pro-Israel school with a large Jewish population. No, um, the president is making a very crass political decision, which is I'm going to turn on Israel because I think that that will get me the margin of votes I need in Michigan, in Minnesota, in Georgia. He is absolutely incorrect. Those people are already not voting for him. Turning on Israel will make absolutely no difference. But let me tell you something. His turning on Israel is exactly what led to Iran to bomb Israel. Make no mistake about it. If his, if his precipitous and foolhardy Afghanistan withdrawal beget the Ukrainian invasion, which it did, his turning on Israel and Gaza beget the Iran invasion. You are crazy if you don't think so. And by the way, Iran didn't calculate wrong. He's already calling for de-escalation. What? What is he talking about? Israel was just hit with 300 missiles and drones. The only reason why they didn't get in is because of this technological miracle that Israel had with its, with its uh, air defense. But Israel has to treat this attack. I'm, I'm, I don't know if a lot of people are calling for this. You have to treat this, your doctrine has to be, you have to treat it as if every missile hit its target. That's the way you have to respond. Because if you don't, all you're doing is telling your enemies, I can attack you with no repercussions. That's what you're doing. And if it gets through finally, I will decimate you. Yet this president is already preempting and pushing and pressuring Israel not to respond in the massive way that it needs to.